Hello and welcome to VNN. We have with us today uh, Nina Tangri, Ontario's Associate Minister of Small Business and uh, Red Tape Reduction and MPP for Mississauga Streetsville. And today she will tell us about the province's uh, gas tax program and how it will benefit the people of Ontario. Welcome to VNN, uh, Minister Tangri. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Balaji. And uh, first, I want to say a, a very good afternoon to all the viewers of EWN. It's, it's really a pleasure to join you all today. Yeah, first, uh, tell us something about this gas tax program of Ontario. I, I don't think many people know about it, what, what, what is behind it. Yes, Balaji. That was so, uh, the thing is, is public transit, as we all know, it plays such a critical role right across Ontario by helping so many people get to where they need to go, whether it's uh, to work, to buy groceries, to visit loved ones, to go to medical or business appointments. And, and it's, it's a huge part of our economic recovery. So what we did is our government, we committed to helping municipalities improve their transit. So right across the province. Um, so this year we are providing from the gas tax $375.6 million uh, through this program. And uh, this actually helps 107 municipalities um, to help them build better transit. Uh, so we're talking about 12 million people that use transit uh, every day. So it's a huge thing. Uh, you know, but just one question. Why over the over dollar 18 million to Mississauga and only 480,000 to Brampton and Kennedy? And why this wide disparity, big disparity, isn't it? So, uh, so it's actually the, the, we, the city of Mississauga gets them, but also the region of Peel. So uh, what we have is we have 375 million in total. Um, and then what we did is we added extra funding into this. Mm -hmm. So for Mississauga, and it's based on the gas tax itself on how it comes in. And uh, so I haven't compared, uh, to be quite honest with you, with Mississauga and Brampton. I, I get the Mississauga numbers directly. Yeah. So I'm unaware of what Brampton is getting. Um, but, you know, we see $18 million coming directly to the city of Mississauga to support our transit system. Um, but there's also almost a half a million, so 482000 going to the region of Peel to help them put together their the transit system and expand and, uh, and improve it. It's just uh, desperately needed throughout the province. But you know, the problem is, does it mean that uh, Mississauga motorists were driving less and thereby using less fuel so that now they get more gas tax funding? Or, uh, I, yeah. Hmm, or Mississauga so, um, transit system? Yeah, so you're asking me for the comparison with Brampton, so I'm unable to provide that today. I can certainly find that out uh, on, on what the comparisons are between the two cities. Uh, our responsibility, of course, is the whole province, but we, we do tend to look as MPPs at our own either riding or municipality, in our case, Mississauga. So uh, looking at the way that is, it's actually because people have been driving significantly less throughout the pandemic, as we all know, uh, there's actually been a lot less money coming in in gas tax. So we actually topped it up. Uh, so 120 million of that funding is actually money we put in there to help the municipalities because uh, you know, even if there's less people traveling to work, for example, we still need to have the system up and running and it's still got to be predictable and available for those who need it. Those of us who have a vehicle can get to and from where we need to go uh, so much easier, but those who depend on public transit, we have to make sure we're there for them. No, but looking at the figures, it looks like, I mean, the Mississauga Transit is, uh, performs much better than the Brampton Transit. So, so people are using more transit than their own cars. That's what it looks like, the figures. Anyway, I think <laughs> we can talk about that later. Any uh, federal funding available to support this program? So we do work with the federal government on, uh, but this particular program is funding from us at the Ontario government. So, you know, when we look at all the different uh, levels of taxation, um, so when we go to purchase gas, of course, there's part of it to go to the provincial government, to the federal government, to offset carbon emissions. There's yeah. so many different parts. And, uh, you know, I, I, it's, it, it, it's the actual cost of the actual uh, gasoline itself is just a small part of that uh, yeah, two, two uh, of what you pay. Yeah, two cents per yeah. liter or something, yeah, that's yeah. I mean, uh, so federal funding is also part of the stream. Eh? Uh, uh, so the federal stream. government does provide funding to the province, which we also distribute to as well, yeah. Okay, apart from this now, um, um, we are now minister, Associate Minister of Small Business and Red Tape Reduction. Are there any new initiatives uh, being launched by the ministry? So uh, there's a lot taking place right now. As you know, um, 
this week we opened up the, um, the those who are businesses, for example, um, to be able to apply for the energy rebates and property tax rebates. So if you've been fully closed down 100%, for example, a restaurant or a gym, uh, you can apply to have 100% of that uh, rebates come to you. The application is already open for that. Um, and also for all the people, residences and businesses, we've taken now to the off-peak rate. So uh, there are two, yeah, so there's two streams right now. You can either be time of use or uh, you can be a tiered rate. So we've taken that away and we've dropped it to 8.2 cents per kilowatt hour. And what that does, that's half of the peak rate. So uh, it will make a difference to each and every one of us. People are at home, they're working from home, the children have been at home. Uh, so, you know, it's, it's obvious that the energy costs would go up. So we really wanted to, to find a way we could help everybody in Ontario. And this was a great way to do that. So uh, you don't have to do anything. You don't have to put an application in. This is automatically done right on your, your bill directly. So that's really good. And then for businesses that are coming up in the next couple of weeks, you'll see the opening of the, uh, the portal for the Small Business Relief Grant uh, that provides a one-time payment of $10,000 to eligible businesses. Um, so if you got the second funding from the government in the previous grant stream last year, uh, and you are one of these eligible businesses, we're going to reach out to you. You don't have to apply. Uh, we will send you an email. You have to attest that you are still a hundred, under 100 employees. You're still in business. Uh, and a couple of very quick things you'll send to us, and we will send you the payment straight to your bank account. Um, so, But for example, if you were a new business, uh, you would, didn't qualify for that previous grant, uh, you can apply for this one. So you need to show that you are, have lost at least 20% revenue from December to January, So, which is very easy. If you're closed, you're closed. Um, and there's a few other things through the portal that you have to answer questions to. Uh, and of course, provided this with your banking information, we will go through each of those applications and uh, then put payments straight into your bank account if you are one of the eligible businesses there. Will this electricity rebate be extended uh, by some more days or weeks if, if needed? Um, so as of right now, uh, we are planning our reopening. Uh, so as you know, on January the 31st, uh, the Premier announced yesterday, uh, we will start reopening. So restaurants, gyms, and many of the businesses that were fully closed down can now have 50% capacity. So as we reopen, we will probably not need to have uh, these programs in place as people start being able to go back to work, back to school. The kids are back in school now. Um, so the need to have that additional support for the home costs of energy uh, may not continue, but we'll, we'll be we'll be you know uh, checking as we go through uh, for the next few weeks. And uh, as you know, the program just opened two days ago, so we want to make sure we wanted to make sure we could support everybody as much as we possibly could. Uh, but we have to do this is taxpayers' money; uh, it's your money, so we have to be very responsible and prudent with that funds too. No, last year, the I think the ministry was uh, introducing a bill called a Supporting Recovery and Competitiveness Act. Uh, has it been passed? Yes, yeah, supporting uh, um, people and businesses act was passed uh, before we rose uh, uh, for the winter break. Uh, so that that is now uh, legislation. And there were so many wonderful things. For example, and a lot of small things from many different ministers. I think we had. Um, 17 ministries participate in that bill and uh you know one of the small things so for restaurants for example um we allowed them because of the pandemic to extend their patios so that uh, they were closed down for indoor dining but in the summertime people do like to sit outside so we allowed them to expand that area that they could do that of course they have to apply to the municipality so as long as their municipality was okay with that they could do it but that was only a temporary measure so now we've made that permanent so as long as the city's okay with it, you can go ahead and do that each and every year. So uh, for those businesses in the, the restaurant industry, they really do uh, appreciate something similar to that. So there's a lot of very small items that are very impactful for those that they they, they serve. So it, it is, uh, it's good that we were able to do that. In business associations have given Ontario an A plus grade in uh, red tape uh, reduction. That's a, that's a very good thing. And there's more coming, there's more we can do. And we're, we're looking uh, to the general public, to the business community and everyone to, to, you know, to bring uh, you know more ideas if, if they within their businesses their professions their industries or even as consumers and you say you know this this particular thing is very difficult to maneuver uh, we want to make it much easier to do work or business with the government 
So we were working on one-stop portals within the government. So if you need a permit or you need something, you just have to click one button. You don't have to go to the Ministry of Environment and then the Ministry of Economic Development and then the Ministry of Health. We want to make it make it easier for you so you can come to one place and, and have it all happen right there. We've already opened the business registry portal, which connects to the CRA. So you can you know, register your business very quickly now. It's so much faster. So that digital one-stop window for approval is now open. It's it's functioning, eh? Yeah, that, that is already started, but we, there's more to do. When you when you think about um, government ministries, so each of them has their own individual um, systems. Oh, yeah. So yeah. what we're trying to do, we're building one system that will bring all of those systems in together, just to make it so much easier for everyone. I mean, we, people shouldn't have to fill out the same information over and over and over again for different ministries. I mean, you know, government's here to help people, not to make it difficult. So uh, we're working on that. It's in the process so uh i'm really looking forward to being able to see that to uh, do more yeah, i think it's a very good idea to have this um, ministry for uh, red tape reduction and that's a very good it should it should be in all provinces i don't think they have yeah not all some do um i know that uh, alberta has the minister just of red tape reduction uh so uh, we're getting together and discussing things that they're doing what we're doing and uh, how we can support each other and learn from each other too right you know no there's there's no um you don't have to reinvent the wheel if something works well in ontario it may work well in other provinces so we do look at each other and what we're doing on how we can assist each other uh and you know if something works really well why not adopt it and uh you know utilize it in ontario if it works well in bc or alberta or elsewhere so um we're doing a lot of that a lot of cross-jurisdictional work and then a lot of the things we have been doing is the, the, the provinces have been working together. We've done a lot of work with Quebec, but we're also collaborating with the federal government and the municipalities, especially through COVID. I and mean, people want to see governments working together. They don't want, um, you know, the federal government saying the provincial government and then the municipalities and regions. They want us to work together. And uh, we've been working very, very hard. The premier talks to the federal government constantly uh, with his counterparts right across the country. And uh, we've been able to do a lot of work together. And then sometimes it's working together to put pressure on the federal government to get us our rapid tests, to get us our PCR testing, to get us the vaccines. You know, it's been it's been a huge challenge, as you can imagine, just getting them here and getting them out into people's arms. I do do want to take an opportunity, though, Balaji, if you don't mind. I want to thank you uh, and uh, all the viewers uh, for doing your part. Uh, you know, the best way out of this pandemic really is to get your vaccine. And uh, you've really stepped up. You've really been, you know, in, in Ontario, we're probably leading the pack across the world in vaccinations and um, even the booster vaccinations. Uh, so it really is has been great. You've done your part. You've stayed home. You've masked. You've physically distanced. Uh, and we really do appreciate the work that everyone, it's been a lot of sacrifice from each and every one, from businesses. And, uh, you know, we are seeing, we are seeing light at the end of the tunnel. I know we've said that before, and uh, we're very hopeful uh, that as we see the growth rate of Omicron uh, slowly decline, um, that we will see less pressure on our hospitals and we can start really reopening things up and have some normalcy back in our lives. And uh, recent polls are saying that um, Doug Ford remains as popular as ever. And uh, the PCs <laughs> are leading in the polls. That's a good sign for you, isn't it? Well, you know what? I mean, I, I have to, you know, I, as I've known uh, Doug Ford and the Premier for, for, yeah. for many years now, uh, and working with him side by side and seeing the work he does. And he's such, he's so on the ground and he's, he's just so genuine. And, and I think that's what people appreciate, that he's an everyday guy uh just really wants to do what's right at the same time just balancing everyone's health and safety with our economy right so you know you know on the one side a lot of people want us to have absolutely everything closed down until this is gone yeah, and then on the other side we want the others who want nothing closed down because it hurts our mental health it oh, hurts our businesses yeah. <laughs> yeah and then we have to find the right place to put that balance so how can we keep people safe as, as safe as possible protect our health care system but also um be able to keep our economy running as well and you know when we think about our supply chain uh we know that there are challenges right now especially you know with trucking and getting supplies to our grocery stores if you go you can see many shelves very empty that's not a good sign so we have to be very careful that we continue to keep our supply chain going so we you know we need food <laughs> we only 
something to eat, right? And, and uh, you know, I do want to thank all of those on the front lines and the retail stores, the grocery clerks, uh, the frontline healthcare workers. They've really stepped up and protected all of us and made sure that we have everything that we need in our necessities throughout the pandemic. Thank you, Minister Tangri. And uh, that is a very insightful conversation. And uh, you have given us some idea about how your ministry works and about this gas funding program and about the red tape reduction. Anything else you would like to tell our viewers? Yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, we're, we're in our, we have a plan put forward and uh, we announced yesterday on uh, reopening. And uh, we're certainly looking forward to seeing some normalcy back in our lives that we're able to go and have a meal in a restaurant again, go visit the gym. And, you know, finally, uh, yeah, the New Year's resolutions that we always have each and every year uh, to be fit and healthy. Um, but I, you know, I, I just want to once reiterate again, I want to thank each and every one of you, my constituents here in Mississauga Streetsville and right across the province. Um, and the messages that you're getting out for us, Balaji, uh, if it, you know, the media, we, we, we absolutely have an immense amount of respect for the media because we do need you to help get that message out to everyone to stay home, to stay safe, to save lives, to take care of your family. And uh, because of the great work you've been doing, uh, we've been able to get that message out there. So we do appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tangri. Thanks a lot. You, know, you heard uh, Minister Tangri talk to us about uh, different programs. And uh, thank you again. Welcome to VNN again. I Thank think you. we'll have a chance to talk again later. I'm sure. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.